This video is about some dives that I made when I was in Palau. I went to Palau on my sailboat and ended up staying there about a year. Uh, Palau has some really spectacular diving. I've been diving for over 50 years and uh, some of the best diving that I've seen are on the drop-offs in Palau. Now, uh, these are gray reef sharks. Now, I, uh, about 45 years ago, I was actually had a, a, an event where I was bitten. Me and my diving partner were bitten by the same type of shark. We were uh, diving, my friend was photographing, and we were bitten, him pretty severely on his arm. I was bitten on my hand. But normally these sharks are non-aggressive, especially if you're in Palau. They tend to, to swim back and forth across the drop-off, and they, uh, they're basically looking for food. There's a lot of upwelling, a lot of nutrients in the water, so you see a lot of smaller fish. And uh, so they're, they're in this area because of the, uh, the food, and they tend to just hang off the uh, down slope, and they're they're kind of hydroplaning in the water using their pectoral fins to provide lift, so they don't have to really move very much. They don't spend much energy. They just wait for things to come to them, and it's fairly common to see predation. In other words, they're feeding on other fish, and you can see that from time to time. Uh, there are also other species that come here to aggregate for spawning. Uh, some of these are red snappers, you'll see more of those later on. Um, but the plow is really known for these aggregations, and they're quite spectacular because you've got like large numbers of fish in a small area. So the coral growth is quite good because there's a nice current always sweeping by here. And as I said, the, the sharks try to remain as motionless as possible, maybe just moving slowly up current. That way they can keep an eye out for any type of food that might come their way. Uh, common practice in Palau now is to uh, hook into the reef. <clears throat> There's a, a small hook that you use so that uh, you can hang on to the bottom and just observe because the current is quite strong and there's a chance of damaging uh, the reef. You'll see some of that later on. So, uh, yeah, I did a couple of dives on this particular spot. It's called Blue Corner, and there's also uh, a very big cave nearby. You can see a jack there. It looks like a, a bluefin trevally and uh, some, some butterfly fish, a small white fish there. Um, there's also some, well, a lot of these fish are noted for just hanging around where there's current and feeding on the plankton. Those were the ones that we just saw. Um, so, you know, these kind of conditions are really good, and the water's very clear. It's like, I would say, 100 meters or something like that. Uh, of course, that can change, but the normal conditions are for very good visibility. Uh, now here you see a parrotfish, it's going up, it's pooping in the water, which is what they do normally. They're, they're constantly grazing on the, the coral, chewing it up and digesting the plant component, and then they basically spew out the, uh, the, the calcareous, or the, uh, the carbonate materials. Um, so yeah, these are uh, butterfly fish. I believe this is where, yes, uh, you can see how divers are hooked onto the reef, uh, hopefully to avoid damage to the reef, although uh, there's a little bit of touching, but nothing like there used to be when I, when I went there 40 years ago. Uh, you know, it's not that good to touch the coral, but sometimes it, it's unavoidable. And, you know, it can uh, try to minimize that, but um, it's a good idea to have uh, people being hooked in because you don't have to touch. As much you can see, they were pretty large uh, groups. I would say these are mainly smaller sharks in the four foot, three to four foot range. Uh, the one that bit us, me and my partner, was about five foot long. So they can do a lot of damage. I mean, they're uh, they're capable of inflicting really 
painful wounds. They could even kill you, possibly. Now, this is a, a spawn reactivation of the red snapper. So you can see there's large numbers of the, the same fish. And there's some other, these are some jacks. And there's a uh, oceanic trigger fish swimming by. And uh, they're just uh, basically there for the same reason, to, uh, to find other uh, mates to, uh, that they can spawn with. Um, and of course, the, the gray reef are always in the background. They're always uh, looking around, just keeping an eye on things. This is another species. This is called um, a humpback or the paddle tail uh, snappers. And there's a big eye snapper there. It's actually not a snapper, but it's closely related. Um, again, these are just kind of congregating to uh, kind of assess the sex ratios. And there's also hormonal changes that go on at certain times of the year. This is an overhead shot of the, uh, the jacks uh, kind of schooling around. Um, they're, uh, they're all about maybe two to three feet long. This is another type of shark called a white tip. And they're much less mobile than the gray reefs. They tend to just stay in the bottom uh, with facing into the current and waiting for things to come their way. This is uh, a type of a grouper. It's called the Bear Mundy Cod. Uh, it's a very good eating fish. Uh, turtles, well, you can't eat those, but this is a green turtle and uh, quite common there. Now, this is a, a humpback or Napoleon wrasse. They're the largest species of wrasse in the world, and they've been really uh, hunted and uh, targeted for the live fish trade. So they're protected in many areas. Uh, this one's probably about four feet long, but they get much bigger than that. There's just some still photos of uh, gray reefs um, just swimming out in the open in the blue water. And uh, up in the water column a little bit. They're really perfectly designed for, for swimming. They're very streamlined and they uh, they're just very well adapted for the life that they that they lead. And as I said, they uh, they're usually not aggressive, but they do have a type of behavior, and that's how we got bitten. Actually, uh, uh, we were in the water with one that was an aggressive an aggressive uh, behavior, which wasn't that well known at the time, where they arched their back and put their pectoral fins. Now here are just some still photos of the reef. Uh, as I said, it's a pretty steep drop-off, so you go along the drop-offs. Um, here are some more pictures of the, uh, the jacks, some angelfish. These are some uh, smaller barracuda that are schooling. Again, the, the red snappers up, uh, up in the water column. And these, this final fish is called the African pompano. It's a type of a jack. When they're younger, like these ones, sub-adults, they have these long trailing filaments. They're, ve they're very, uh, very beautiful to observe. So I hope you like this video. If you do, uh, please share and subscribe if you want to. I'm going to be putting more and more stuff on. So, um, well, I hope to, uh, to get some stuff on pretty soon. So thanks for looking, and uh, I'll see you later.